good evening it is indeed a pleasure to participate in this conceptual pediatric trauma course i am greeting to you from mangalore i have been given three subjects the first one is on incomplete fractures in children what is an incomplete fracture incomplete fracture is one where by a trauma the fracture either bends the bone or does not break both the cortices and the three main causes of incomplete fractures are the torus fracture number two a green stick fracture as you see in that uh, x-ray and the third is a plastic deformation of bone the incomplete fractures why is it more common in pediatric age group it is because the heversion can also occupy more part of the cortex as you see there and makes the bone much more porous and much more flexible and there is a higher collagen to the bone ratio in the bone as a tissue and the periosteum metabolically is active and it is much more thicker than in an adult adult versus child in adults a fracture occurs and a bone fails in when there is a tension whereas in children bone fails both in tension and fails in compression as well so it is a bimodal where there is tension and a compression acting first we come to the buccal or torus fracture the torus fracture as you is a traumatic the number 2 is a traumatic bowing of the bone and there is a plastic deformation three is a green stick fracture you go to the garden today in your garden and try to break a green stick this is how it breaks where there is a compression and an elasticity where there is a tension failure and thereby the opposite cortex is intact with the periosteal sleeve whereas the the nearest fracture the nearest uh, cortex breaks and that is how it occurs as you see here the periosteum is still holding and the cortex does not completely break as you see in that picture coming to the torus fracture torus fracture derived its name resemblance to the base of an architectural column which is seen in the roman roman pillars of pestarius where there is where there is a weakening between the metaphyseal and the diaphyseal portion of the bone that's why the it is the 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 base of the architecture column should be much more stronger the fracture occurs between the metaphyseal ovum bone and the diaphyseal junction it requires only splinting or plastering for 3 weeks only when it is displaced it requires a reduction rarely there is an angulation or a displacement and that may have to be corrected and this is how we treat a torus fracture usually 20% in these fractures deformity has been found to increase after the plaster is removed usually we give a plaster depending on the age of the patient between 3 to 4 weeks and you may not you may you may not uh, you need not be surprised the deformity may increase when you when you remove the plaster but if it is less than 20 degrees it molds very well that's why if it is more than 20 degrees even initially when there is an angulation it has to be corrected next we come to the next plastic bone bowing of the fracture what is plastic deformity is the ability of the immature bone when there is an impact goes into deformation usually it occurs in the ulna in the both bones of the forearm and rarely it can occur in the femur as well and you see a plastic deformation the bone bends like a bow because because of the because it doesn't break but because of the elasticity at the periosteal sleeve it bows as you see in that particular picture 
and the bone usually remodels after the, after the plastic deformation but most author, authors recommend reduction of the plastic deformation if angulation or the bowing the, the bowing as such when it is measured is more than 20 degrees this is how it is sandals and hackman described a fulcrum to apply either you put a sandbag or the, as you see in that particular picture and a steady force at the apex of the deformity for a few minutes and gradually you do not force it you do not break the bone but as it is seen in that particular picture you you correct the correct deformity and to almost into neutral position as you see here you see the fingers on the other side pressing pressing the bone and the sandbag on the opposite side so that the deformation as such is corrected and it is imperative that an above elbow cast is given for three to four weeks. We come to the last part of the of the of the incomplete fracture, which is which is more common than the other two, the green stick fracture. Occurs due to flexibility and the thicker periosteum, as I told you. And the cortex in tension fractures completely breaks, whereas in compression undergoes deformation, as you see there. The treatment of these fractures require breaking of the opposite part and reduction of the fracture through uh, the and Herring et al. and Robert Lane emphasizes only correction of the deformity that you need not break the cortex as such. But many of us still believe that unless you really break the cortex, there is a possibility inside the plaster if it is not molded properly, the deformity can recur. <clears throat> And this is how you reduce the fracture as you see here, almost an anatomical straightening of the bone. You see the molding of the plaster being done on the anterior and posterior side. And, and an above elbow cast is imperative almost in a semi-prone position, depending on the site of the fracture. So to conclude on incom incomplete fracture, the number one is a torus fracture. And number two is a traumatic bow bowing of the bone, a plastic deformation. And number three is the clean stick fracture, opposite of that of complete fractures. In short, the treatment for a torus fracture is immobilization for two to three weeks without reduction in majority of the cases. Whereas, whereas in green stick fracture, close reduction under 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 GA and correction of the deformity correctly, and in plastic deformation of the bone, close reduction without GA with sedation and an above forecast. Thank you.